Hi everybody, I'm Tony E at UAP Interface Brief, and I want to do another epic fail video. It seems to be the only thing I'm good at lately is failing, and um, and that's very important to face this head on. About a week ago, um, Network Chuck and Keith Barker. Um, traded a lab back and forth. Keith Barker created a lab for his CCNA class. Uh, Network Chuck took that lab, lab, injected some faults into it, and broke the lab, and then gave it back to Keith for him to solve. And I saw them talking about this on Twitter, and, and Network Chuck was saying, can you fix this network? And put it out there, and anyone can download it and try it. And I haven't labbed in a very long time since I did my CCIE. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to give it a try, no problem. So I had some struggles even getting started. First I had to get Packet Tracer, then I had to get an account on the Learning Network, I had to get the soft... Getting the software and installed in an account was rough that Saturday morning. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to go ahead and record mine before Keith Barker aired his solution uh, to the lab. So I jumped in that Saturday morning right away and started uh, and started recording um, after I got Packet Tracer installed. And once I opened the topology, it seemed very simple. I said, you know what? Okay, no problem. Let's go ahead and, and get this taken care of. Um, we are all quarantined at home because of the coronavirus. And, um, and it was, you know, my time to be a dad in the family. So I had with me my, my beautiful little number three baby girl. And, uh, and she was helping me on my uh, labs, as you can see. And it was quite a distraction uh, to have her in my lap while I was doing this lab. In fact, I felt like kind of a badass having the baby in the lab uh, while sort of working this lab with one handed and working my way through the lab. You know, I thought I was going to be very successful and a nice sort of um, boastful show off moment. You don't have many in your life, but when you do, and that was how the day started and it quickly went downhill. Uh, working with her in my lap, as you can see, as I kind of scroll through this video, was quite a pain. Um, I really couldn't get much done. She kept dropping her toys. Um, I just, I couldn't get anything done. She was banging on the keyboard. Uh, my lovely wife came in to take her from me um, after a few minutes. And, and I went and quickly dove into making an excellent solution video that was going to knock everybody's socks off. And if you take a look at the timeline... on my editing software here. Um, this lab took me, if I go all the way to the end of it, uh, an hour and 26 minutes. An hour and 26 minutes, I worked this lab and I did not solve it. In fact, I was having some real basic connectivity with simple, uh, uh, simple connectivity on two hosts sharing the same VLAN I was getting so frustrated, I was working myself into the rabbit hole. I was going far down the rabbit hole trying to figure out what could possibly be going wrong with this thing. To the point that after an hour and 27 minutes, I didn't even fix one thing that was working properly. And I had to give up. And that was a real awakening. That was a real awakening to say how far and... Uh, how far I've come, all the studies that I've done and all the labs that I've done and everything that I've worked so hard for to prepare for the CCIE. And here I'm presented with this little tiny topology, this little packet tracer topology. It's tiny in comparison to the CCIE labs. And I couldn't even get basic connectivity between two hosts in the same VLAN. And I did not know what the solution was. So I quit. After about an hour and a half of not getting it, I quit. I couldn't sit here the entire Saturday. My, you know, I had my family here. I, this was supposed to be a quick thing, and I was going to be done. So I made my recording, and I kept it right here. And I failed. Um, 
I was going to publish this and I decided not to. So many hours went by and I don't know what time of day it was, but later on that evening, I said, you know what? I have to go back and solve this lab. I have to be successful. I will not let this lab beat me. So later on that night, after everyone went to bed, I fired up the recording software, got the microphone ready, and started the lab again from scratch. Uh, I did not start where I did last time. I started at the other end of the topology. I started at the other end just so I could have a complete, fresh perspective on it because out of everything that I've learned through my CCIE preparation efforts, I learned a lot of technology. I learned a lot of protocols. I learned a lot of configurations. But one of the things that I learned most of all was not giving up. Was when you go down the rabbit hole, you need to stop, quit, take a walk, come back and reset. And that's basically what this was. This was a reset. This was a mental reset for me because I really had my ego shattered on the first one. I couldn't figure out why two hosts on the same VLAN could not ping each other, could not reach each other. It was absolutely embarrassing and, I f and a failure that I wear as, <laughs> as a badge. But I didn't want to fail, so I wanted to try again. So I tried again, and I started at the other end of the topology, and I'm actually being quite successful. I'm being very efficient. I'm being very clean. I'm being very methodical with my troubleshooting. And I start work in the lab, and it's doing okay for me. In fact, I think this right here is a great snapshot on how I felt at the end of my first take. Just my head in my hand, and I have no idea what's going on. But as I move to my second take, I'm happy. Things are going well. We're working, we're working, we're working. And I shot my second take for about an hour and a half, almost two hours, more than, no, more than two hours. It took me more than two hours to shoot my, so my second attempt at the solution. And I noticed some very strange and buggy things going on. Packet Tracer has made a lot of advancements from when I used it when I was using, when I was uh, studying in the Netacad program, it was very had very basic functionality back then, and there's a lot more functionality and many more devices and many more capabilities in Packet Tracer. But it is still lacking; it is still not emulating a real network. It's great, I think, for the CCNA program and some of the CCNP work. Um, in getting you used to a nice structured approach in, in some predetermined labs that Cisco can build um, that follow a curriculum. It's decent software, but for this challenge, it is not great software. I found some very strange things happening that I cannot explain. Um, it was a fun lab. I'm going to tell Network Chuck and Keith Barker it was a fun lab for everybody. It's definitely fun. It's worth trying. But what I found most frustrating of all was the lab software itself. There are some bugs in there that aren't quite right. Um, I had to do a write mem and reload on a couple of devices. That shouldn't even have fixed anything, but it did fix some things. Um... Once I worked from one end of the topology back to where I failed on my very first one, I got stuck again. I got stuck again at the same place, at the same place with the same stuff. And I did not know what was the solution. That was late Saturday night. I spent over two and a half hours recording this lab. And right when I was, I would say, at the end, trying to get the last bit of connectivity, if I scroll ahead in my lab here, Somewhere. I got a crash. I got this.
crash. Packet tracer has stopped working unexpectedly. Please save a diagnostics dump file. I couldn't believe it. After putting two and a half hours into working this lab, just to have the software crash, it was an absolute nightmare for me. I felt completely defeated. It didn't have the, the reason to go again. I didn't release these recordings because if you notice at the end here, these are two video streams and an audio stream and they should have all began and end, ended at the same moment and they didn't. Um, the audio has started to track off. Um, I'm not sure what the problem was or is and in trying to correct the audio and video would have made it very choppy and just it would have been worthless, absolutely worthless. Anyhow. Um, so that was Saturday night. I worked very hard at that lab. So what I did was Sunday morning, um, I got up, I watched Keith Barker's, um, YouTube, uh, premiere, his YouTube recording of him solving it. And I was very happy and relieved to see that, um, one, all of the problems, all of the faults that were injected, um, I did find them all. And I did correct them all. However, my solution still wasn't working. I still did not have client-to-client, end-to-end connectivity between all of the clients. But I was also very happy and relieved to see that Keith Barker had the same problem I did in the lab. That made me feel awesome because I was like, okay, you're like, I'm, I'm not crazy. Like, this, this, is, this is a real problem. Uh, but what I didn't do was I didn't stay cool about it. Instead, I got very frustrated, and that was that was wrong. That was a problem. Um, to fix the solution, Keith Barker saved the lab. I watched him. He saved the lab. He closed the software, and he reopened it. And that was something I did not do. I kept the software open. I kept it running. I kept trying to reload the devices. Uh, I guess that approach doesn't work very well. <laughs> And maybe the software needs to be rebooted from time to time. So, so that was my attempt at these labs. Um, it was very humbling because one of the things I learned from my CCIE preparations was never give up. When you go down the rabbit hole, you need to come back out. And one of the things I never expected in all of the labs that I've done, I have never needed to close my simulation software or my emulation software, whether I'm using GNS3 or EVE. I never had to shut them down for a lab to keep working. Uh, sometimes there have been some things where I needed to reboot a device. That's pretty common. But never need I needed to close the software down and reboot it. So um, that wasn't even a strategy that I was in going to employ. A few days later, I saw Dimitri Fiegel also um, on Twitter said he wanted to give it a try on stream. And he's a, he's a excellent um, software and network engineer uh, with Cisco. And I was also relieved to see that his packet tracer was a little buggy also. So um, there were some serious lessons learned there. And I just wanted to uh, put this recording out there because because I said I would and I didn't want to not do it because I failed twice so I'm putting it out there I failed twice lessons were learned and it was a fun lab um, I absolutely love labbing that's why I wanted to jump in and do it that's why I said no problem because I enjoy doing these type of things um, but I failed and the entire time for over a week now, I've had this recording software open just like this and thinking, what am I going to do with these recordings? So this is it. After this, they go in the trash. Thanks, guys. I'll see you next time.